Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today you join me from inside something rather special, a Honda S2000. See, I've got the roof down today. Um, hopefully, the audio is okay. It should be all right. I mean, I'm talking fairly loudly. The wind noise is a bit much, and when you push on in the car, it probably gets even worse. So, I'll try to shut up when I do drive hard and just let you hear the car. Anyway, the S2000 back in 1999, if you wanted a small, lightweight roadster, mid engined, there wasn't a lot to choose from. You had the MX5, of course, the MGF. None of those cars really hit the mark when it came to what a petrol head really wanted. So then in comes Honda with the S2000. Now the S2000 was back to basics for Honda. They really went back to the drawing board and looked at what is it that the car enthusiast wants. And the recipe that they came up with was a 50-50 weight distribution, highly strung, revy roadster. At the time of its release, it was met with a mixed bag of reviews. People complained that the earlier ones were a bit twitchy in the corners. That was probably due to a lack of modern day driver aids. This is actually an earlier one, so O2 plate. It's covered around 31,000 miles. And because of that reason, everything feels like new. The inside is like new, the driver inputs are like new. And the best bit about this car is that it's never actually been modified. So it's got an induction kit on it, which just adds to the drama when you cling onto the revs early on in the 9,000 RPM rev range. But other than that, this car is completely standard, as Honda intended it, and you really get a sense of how special this car is because of that. The driver inputs are brilliant. I mean, there's not a lot of room in here for a bigger person. That is one criticism I have. But the sacrifice is that you have a gear shifter here that is actually renowned as being one of the best manual shifters ever, period. That's partly because of the way this car is constructed. The gear stick is literally, the input or the gearbox is directly below. So there's not a lot of room in the cabin because of all this plastic interior that surrounds it. However, it's worth it for the way this car feels when you drive it. Because of that rev the engine, it just makes you want to hunt the revs. You always want to keep the car in its sweet spot. And when it is in that sweet spot, it's sweet. When you push on, you can feel the, uh, the car gets a little bit twitchy in the corners. But the sense of drama that it creates is just far outweighs any sort of sense that you, you feel nervous or not sure about driving the car. I mean, It's just such a, it's such a driver's car, it really is. I mean, I think I read on an article somewhere that everyone that is a petrol head should own one of these cars, or not own, sorry, to drive. It should be on your bucket list to drive an S2000. These days, the likes of the S2000 will probably never be seen again. Like I said, when this car came out, it was met with mixed reviews. People that love them and drive them got them straight away. Sometimes it might take a bit more time to warm to a car like this. For me, it was instant. The moment I got in this car, I knew that it was something special. Ergonomically, the way that everything's placed around the driver, the dash that really prioritizes the 9,000 RPM red line over everything else, kind of shows you everything you need to know about this car. The fact that you've got this massive zero to 9,000 right in front of you sort of says it all. You know exactly what this car's about, and that is going quick, driving it right to the red line. But in a day and age where manufacturers are pushed to fit turbochargers, make cars cleaner, more economical, we'll probably never see the likes of an S2000 ever again. Whatever comes after this, a successor, if Honda ever make a successor to the S2000, probably won't ever have the same characteristics. Some say that the car perhaps doesn't have that much character, 
lower down in the rev range, below 5,000 RPM, but I'd have to disagree. I think the car has plenty of character still. It's not until 6,000 RPM that it really comes alive, or be it, but it's, it's still got plenty of rewarding factors about it that encourage you to drive it even at normal speeds. It's by no means dull. The, work, the extra work that Honda went to to ensure rigidity is still maintained, even though this car's a soft top, really pays off. You can really tell how well planted and suited this car is to twisty roads. On a sunny day with the roof down, I really can't think of a much of a better car, for the money these cars are now, to go out and have a B-Road blast in. Everything just feels so well put together and it just encourages you even further to chase those revs higher up the rev range. The car is fairly docile low down, so I'm cruising at 4,000 RPM. And although I feel like I'm in something special, it doesn't give you too much of a buzz until you really blitz past the 6,000 RPM mark and all of a sudden the car just comes to life, the VTEC goes and where most cars stop revving and you change up these days, this car wants to scream past 6,000 RPM, all the way to 9,000. There are a few people that have probably even driven a car these days that will rev to that 9,000 RPM mark, which is a real shame. And that's why I think they say that everyone should at least drive one of these, every petrol head should drive one of these at least once in their life. And that's because it's such a different car that it, it deserves, yeah, it's, it's become an icon because of it. The way it revs, the way it drives, deservedly so as well. It's an icon for the right reason, because it just, it's just such a lovely car to drive. Although the car is, you could say, is getting on slightly now, it's 2002, it still feels really modern. You've got a digital uh, speedometer, for example. The inputs, the dash, nothing feels overly dated considering this is now an 18-year-old car getting towards a classic. It still feels like it was almost ahead of its time at the time. In a world of turbo diesels and hybrids and soon to be, in the future, all electric, the S2000's revy, two-litre, naturally aspirated engine doesn't make it redundant. In fact, it makes it even more special. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Like and subscribe and stay tuned for more.